All right, you guys, I'm going to try to do one more video about linear equations that gets you through pages four, five, and six. Um, I'm just going to show you the sections we're going to be talking about. Um, this page is going to ask you how changing either a constant or a coefficient would have an effect on the graph. So if we can talk about this really quick with just slope-intercept form. So you guys know slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Um, this b right here is actually called the constant term. And this m right here, which as you know, the slope is called a coefficient. It's called a coefficient because a coefficient is a number, in this case a variable, that is in front of a, another variable. So a number in front of the variable. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to show you a couple. Here's how changing the b, the constant, we also call this the y-intercept, intercept will affect the graph. So if I graph this guy, um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and write y equals mx plus b underneath. b, that negative 2. So in this case, b is negative 2 and our slope is 2. I'm going to write it as 2 over 1 so you can see that and kind of remember that means rise over run. Let's graph this. So my y-intercept would give me a starting point at negative 2 right here. And my slope would tell me how to get to my next one. So my slope of 2 over 1 means a rise of 2 from here, up 1, 2, and over 1. And if I connect that, I'm going to make a couple more. But if I connect that, you're going to see an equation that makes a line that looks like that. And we can see our y-intercept, our b, and our slope that gives us our next point over and over and over again. So let's change our b. So changing our b, so let's say I had y equals 2x plus 1. Well, the only thing it really changed is my start. So instead of starting at negative 2, now I'm starting at positive 1, and my slope is the same. All right. So if I graph this slope, you're going to see a line parallel to the last one, but it moved up. So if my b is a larger number, my graph's going to shift up. And if my b is a smaller number, my graph's going to shift down. So that's enough about B or the y-intercept. Let's come over here and talk about M. All right. So I'm going to start with Y equals 2X plus 2. So again, I'm going to go ahead and find my y-intercept at 2. We know our slope in this case is still 2 over 1. So I'm going to get an equation that graphs. I'm kind of eyeballing it here, but something like that. And um, we can see that... Again, that's the y-intercept, and that's our slope. Let's change our slope. What if I said y equals just 1x, or just x plus 2? Well, I still have the y-intercept of 2, but now my rise, my slope, would be 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So I get a line that's less steep. All right. If I said y equals 3x plus 2, now I'd get a line that's more steep. I'm not going to draw that one in. So, and we could go one further. We could say, hey, let's, what's y equals negative 2x plus 2? Well, again, my b is the same, but my slope is now negative 2 over 1. So instead of going up 2 and over 1, I'm going down 2 and over 1. And giving it a negative slope means that now my, instead of my graph going up from left to right, it descends from left to right. That should get you through 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, I'm going to talk about slopes a little bit. Um, I'm going to, I don't know, let me figure out a spade. I'm going to draw some slopes right here. So if I'm just talking in general about slopes. All right. A positive slope goes up from left to right. A negative slope goes down from left to right. A zero slope has no rise whatsoever. And if I drew people on here, that's a guy walking uphill, positive slope. That's a guy walking downhill, negative slope. And a zero slope is a guy walking on level ground. He's neither going up nor down. We also have another one called undefined. And undefined is a vertical line. Um, it doesn't pass a vertical line test. This is actually not a function at all. So if you look at this, and I'm going to show you a couple problems that could happen, right? If I had a problem that looked like this, and it said, hey, you know what? I'm going to go through 2, 3. So I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3. 
right there. And I'm undefined. Well, that goes up and down. Well, in a situation like this, your x's never change. I have not moved left nor right. So this equation would be right x equals 2. All right. Let's do the same thing. Let's, let's, let's pick a point, 2, 4. So here's 1, 2, and up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And this time it's got a 0 slope. Well, I see that line right there has not gone up nor down. So this equation is going to be my y's never change. y equals 4. This should roughly get you through 8. All right. I'm going to bring the page over. Actually, I've got another sample problem over here. 9, 10, and on the next page, 11, 12, 13, and 14. All give you problems similar to this, where they give you an equation and ask you to graph it. Well, our goal is once again to be able to write it as y equals mx plus b. So we have to solve for y. In order to solve this guy for y, I'd subtract 2x minus 2x minus 2x, and I would get 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 6. Then I would divide by 3. And I would get y equals negative 2 thirds x because this negative 2 has to be divided by 3. But you also have to divide that 6 by 3 plus 2. I'm going to circle this equation. I'm going to try to center it a little more. I can see that my slope right there, my slope is negative 2 over 3. I could put the negative down here and say positive 2 over negative 3. And I'm going to say b equals 2. So my y-intercept is 2. I go up and I put a dot at 1, 2. And my slope looks to be down 2. There's my rise. And right 3. So from this known point, I go down 2 and right 3. All right. That's if I used a slope of negative 2 over 3. Or I could write that as positive 2 over negative 3, which would be up 2 and left 3. So from this known point, I could go up 2 and left 3. It doesn't really matter if I connect those points, which I'm going to rough, I'm going to kind of eyeball it here. They're the same points. They make the same line. Um, so that should get you through all of page 4 and all of page 5. There's one other page I'm just going to bring over. I'm going to bring over page 6. All right, so I'm going to turn to that page. You should have a page that looks like this, and I'm going to do one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this guy. It'll show you how to find what line it's talking about. Every single one of these lines ends up pointing to one of your problems. So this equation right here has to do with this line right here. And I'm going to try to figure out my y-intercept first. So I'm going to go until it touches the y-axis, which is right here. I'll put a little dot. My y-intercept is negative 1. Now I'm going to try to figure out my slope. So my slope is, well, I need two points to find my slope. And it looks like there's a point there, and there's another point here. Rise is down 1, so my rise is negative 1. And my run is to the right 2, so my run would be positive 2. And again, you could switch that negative and go up 1 and left 2 and find another point. I'll show you from here. Up 1 and left 2, if I turn it around. But that's my equation. That's everything I need. So again, I'll write y equals mx plus b above, and I'll plug everything y equals my m is negative one half x and my b is negative one so you should be good up through page six do not wait to do this do everything as i give it to you a day at a time but we should be done before with most of this packet before the end of summer do not wait for the last week of summer to do everything please stay on top of this all right Enjoy your week. I'm going to probably put a couple more pages up before the end of this week and um, talk to you soon.